It, it, it's not because I'm nervous or anything like that. I'm, I'm pretty much terrified. Um, th this is actually my live heartbeat. Um, I'm, I'm wearing a Bluetooth heart rate monitor right now, and it's sending my actual live heartbeat to a browser, Chrome. And I'm, I'm, I'm all right. This is fine. <laughs> Uh, to prove that this is my live heartbeat, I'll just take it off, and then I'm dead. Uh, OK. Um, let's start. So this talk is fun with Bluetooth. Uh, I brought all kinds of Bluetooth devices with me to show you today. And uh, well, the big question I always get when I do this talk is, why? Why would you want to do Bluetooth from a browser? <laughs> um, why? Well, the answer to that is progressive web apps. So. Progressive web apps are great. You get offline support, an app-like experience, an add-to-home screen. And for many things, it offers an equivalent or even a better experience than native apps. So there is one thing that PWAs can't do. They, they are great for talking to servers on the internet, but not so great for talking to devices you have at home. To do that, you need native, native apps. But I don't want to download a 500 megabyte crappy app on my phone. Or uh, it was built five years ago, it doesn't work anymore. Or I want to use my laptop or my desktop, and they only built a phone app. So, well, there are many technologies that you can use to talk to devices. But for various reasons, they are not really suitable for web apps. For example, even though that my uh, uh, light bulbs or, or my Sonos uh, uses Wi-Fi and actually exposes a web server that you could connect to, uh, they are often only HTTP. And good luck, good luck connecting to them from your HTTP-only progressive web app. So there is one technology that is ideal for devices. And it's low energy, it's cheap, and there is a web API in the works. Bluetooth. And I know, I know. Uh, the first thing everybody always says when you start talking about Bluetooth is Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth sucks. It's slow, limited range, sparing, 20-year-old technology, 20-year-old uh, standard. Why, want to use, why would you want to use that? Well, Bluetooth low energy, or Bluetooth uh, low energy is completely different from the classic Bluetooth that you know. Um, it's a modern standard, and it actually solves all of those problems. It's known under many names, uh, Bluetooth uh, 4, Bluetooth 5, BLE, uh, and, uh, if you're worried about range, one of the issues of the classic Bluetooth, the maximum range that they manage to get Bluetooth 5 working is more than a kilometer between devices. So this is a modern technology. And actually, there are 10 million devices shipping every single day with Bluetooth, uh, like mobile phones, computers, of course, uh, but even serious applications like glucose mon uh, monitors. Um, or activity trackers uh, for sports and health, heart rate monitors, uh, IoT, light bulbs, and not serious applications, but still lots of fun gadgets supporting Bluetooth, like little robots, or drones, or fidget spinners. Uh, forget about that, that one. Um, before I show you cool stuff, uh, First, the boring theoretical stuff. I'm sorry. 
So when you have Bluetooth devices, you're talking about central devices and uh, peripherals. The central device talks to a peripheral, and not the other way around. Um, so if you have a mobile phone, your central device, it can talk to multiple peripherals, but they can't talk to each other. So your drone can't talk to your light bulb, if it wanted to. I don't know why, but OK. And when we're talking about web Bluetooth, uh, we're talking about a very specific part of Bluetooth, the generic attribute profile. And that has a very obvious abbreviation, of course. Uh, no, G-A-T-T, because why logic? Um, so G-A-T-T uh, has, again, different names for our devices. We have clients and servers. Your light bulb is a server. I had to wrap my head around that for a bit, but it's true. Light bulbs are servers. And a server, in, uh, for a Bluetooth device, a server means you offer some services. And those services contain characteristics, and those characteristics contain values. It's a bit like um, an array of objects that contains an object that contains properties with values. Only it's a really weird and inconvenient way to access those values. So services and characteristics are identified by UUIDs. Uh, that means they don't have names. They only have numbers. Um, each of the values you can read or write to, uh, you can get notified of changes, a bit like an event listener. And every value is an array of bytes. So there are no fancy data types. So, phew. That was the boring theoretical stuff. So in practice, how does this look like? I have an app on my phone, which I can use to identify Bluetooth devices and look at the properties. So I'm going to connect to a light bulb. And once I do, I can see all kinds of services. For example, we have the battery service. I can see it's 90% at the time. Um, but I'm not interested in that one. I'm interested in the custom service with a couple of custom characteristics. And what all of these do, I have no idea, because there is no documentation. But the top one, that is particularly interesting, where there are four bytes there. So what if I change one of those bytes? For example, 0, 0, FF0000. The light bulb turns red. OK, let's try another one. Um, 0, 0, 0, 0, FF0000. And it turns green. That sounds familiar. Uh, 0, 0, uh, let's see. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, FF. What happens? Blue, of course. RGB. Th this is something we know. Um, but what about that first one? What happens then? So FF 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And it turns white. So there are four LEDs in this light bulb. And you can control the intensity of each of those LEDs by changing some bytes. So we could create every single color we want to. And we're going to try that. So, so far, this has been boring facts about Bluetooth. So now it's time for fun with Bluetooth. Um, but first, um, the API. Um, modern browsers, or Chrome, <laughs> uh, have a new API. And it's the Web Bluetooth API, and you can use it to connect to Bluetooth devices. So uh, it's not really that difficult. Um, I'm going to show you. So there's an API called uh, navigator.bluetooth.requestdevice. And you can provide some extra um, uh, parameters, like which device you want to connect to, like a name or services. and um, with that, if you execute this, 
it's going to try to find devices. That looks like this. This is actually requiring user interaction. Your browser can't just talk to a Bluetooth device in your home without permission, and you actually clicking on pair. Once you do this, you get a promise back. And with that promise, you can connect to the Get server. And you're going to get another promise back. And with that promise, you can connect to the service. You get a promise back, and you, get the char you can get the characteristic. And you get another promise. So it's a, bit little, a little bit more involved than just walking through an array. Um, but basically, you're doing the same thing. So once you have that characteristic promise, you can use it to write data uh, by calling write uh, value on the characteristic with an array of bytes. In this case, our RGB values. And we can read data by calling read value, and you get the data back. And you can get notifications of changes, which is particularly helpful for, for example, a heart rate monitor that constantly updates. Um, and I mentioned it was kind of like add event listener. It is add event listener on the characteristic. And you get data back in a callback. But you don't want to forget actually start listening. Because data is uh, bandwidth is limited, and you don't want to send that much data on the network. So a lot of these characteristics and standards of a characteristics and services are really not standardized. Some of them are, but most of the devices you're going to use are not using standards. So this is um, some of the problems I encountered while figuring this out. So insert XKCD uh, comic about standards here, and uh, we're off. Um, the first one, it's a simple light bulb like this one. We already covered this. It's just four bytes. This is the most same thing you can actually encounter. So let's skip that. This is already a little bit more complicated. Um, the way to write RGB in this example is a little bit unconventional. It's a GBR. And there are some other bytes in there, which are switches to turn on and off colors. But why would you want to do that? Because you can already set the intensity to zero, but OK. And the more you try to find devices that support this, the more problems you're going to encounter. Because this one uh, is already a little bit more complicated. Um, every byte in there has to be exactly this. Otherwise, it won't work. And there is a CRC value that has to be calculated. And there must be a random number in there, because no two sequential messages can be exactly the same. So yeah. I'm not sure why they did that. I also have these LED matrices. And basically, this is just 64 light bulbs. So you can send an RGB value and an index, which of the LEDs you want to change. This is pretty simple. But I also have another one. It's this one. And this one is, well, Interesting. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. OK, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Yeah. A little bit more complicated. That, that is just to change one of the LEDs on that matrix. So you're not going to figure that out unless you have documentation. And there is no documentation. So how do you figure that out? Well, you can actually use a Bluetooth network sniffer. Um, so you can listen to all the packets that are being sent over the network and basically use the app the, the original manufacturer provided and see all the messages that are being sent. But in that last case, even that didn't work. It was a complete mystery. So there is a secret. 
I'm not going to tell you. Well, OK. It's, you can decompile APKs. P please don't tell anyone. And you can actually look at the source code the manufacturer wrote and, well, get some inspiration. So now it's time for the fun part, at least for you, because I'm actually terrified. <laughs> Because this, this is all experimental technology, and, and it's, uh, it may not work. In fact, I did this talk a few years, of a few months ago in London, and none of the demos worked. None. So I'm happy that even one works. So, warning: experimental technology. Um, this works at home. It works on my machine. You've heard that in the last talk. Um, and in this case, it's actually true, because Wi-Fi and Bluetooth use the same frequency, and there are a lot of people using Wi-Fi devices here, so there are bound to be some interference. So let's just take a moment and All right, let's get started. So I brought a couple devices with me. Um, we've already seen Sebastian turn on a light bulb. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to turn on a light. But I'm using a button at the bottom, so that's cheating. But I'm going to turn it on. So I can now connect to this device. And um, well, it doesn't look like the same color, <laughs> but that's because this light bulb is a little bit funky. Uh, um, let's try a better color. And the, <laughs> the moment I change the color on the screen, the light bulb also changes. So let's try something else. Blue is also pretty. Orange. Yeah, this one is not. Again, blue or black. So let's try something else. Um, I can change the colors using some CSS. What else could I do with this? Um, CSS animations? Well. CSS animations on a light bulb. <laughs> now, I'm actually cheating here, because the CSS, CSS animations are running in the browser on um, actually the light bulb you see on the screen. And I regular check the color of the light bulb on screen and send that to the light bulb. But it's still pretty cool. So let's try something else. Um, I guess I can do this. I have, I had a printer here. This is a receipt printer. I'm going to put it here. And I can actually connect to it. And then if you tweet with the hashtag JSNation, it's going to print out something, I hope. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this on. I'm just going to move this to some other demo. So let's try this one.
the LED matrix. And now I'm starting to get nervous. Oh, yeah, there it is. Let's try to draw something. One of my hobbies <coughs> is to draw pixel art monsters. Just so let's try this. Now, I have no idea if it's actually located, of uh, the top is. It works, yeah, okay. A little monster. Again, it isn't that difficult. Uh, it's just sending RGB values and an index. Uh, if I were to try the other one, uh, I don't have the time for that right now, it would be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to make some room. This is the final demo. A Lego car. So usually they come with IR receivers, but they changed it to a Bluetooth receiver. And now I can control the car using uh, my computer. Now I must be... <laughs> I must be very careful not to drive off it of the table, because then it would be broken, and I need it for tomorrow. Um, so, just circles. <laughs> um, what else could we do with that? Is there something we can do with this car? How about CSS animations? I have one right there. So I'm using CSS animation to define key points of, key, of well, keyframes. And I use CSS variables for directions. Um, now, if I remove this dash, it should start follow that animation. But there's also forwards and backwards in the animation, so I you need to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> so let's turn that off. <laughs> OK. So. I mentioned this was the last demo. But I actually have another one. And you may start to feel it getting a little bit hot here now because the fans are turned off on my request. And that's because I, um, well, I mentioned a drone before, right? I brought one with me. Now, I'm going to try to connect to this drone. It takes a while to start up. In the meantime, if somebody wants to connect to that drone for me while I'm still waiting, please don't. <laughs> That's not funny. Um, so let's see if I can, can connect to it.
There it is. So I pr probably should start with it lying on the ground, but I'm not going to. And I probably shouldn't fly over the audience, but I can't promise anything because I literally don't know what I'm doing here. Um, during one of the first tests, I killed a couple of plants. My wife wasn't happy about that. Um, then there's a little Lego space guy on top of the drone, and he almost got decapitated. He wasn't happy about that, but we're going to try anyway. Um, you may notice the big emergency button there. That's there for a reason. So let's try. People in the first row, I, I hope you're, you are good in shirts. Because I'll, I'll, I'll try to fly a little bit back. It doesn't want to go back. Oh, yeah. Not into the screen. Okay. So let's try something else. And a little bit forward. It's really hard to concentrate looking at the drone and looking at the screen and not trying to crash. So I'm just going to land. All right. So those are the demos. And it is a lot of fun to play with this technology. And that doesn't mean there are no serious, serious imp uh, implementations for this. You could use this, for example, to um, modernize remote healthcare uh, using uh, glucose monitors and heart rate monitors and send that data in a safe and secure way to your doctor. And there are many more technologies with IoT, and but flying drones is really cool also. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>